You know, I have a feeling that there will come a time when a country like China, who, if you listen to Alistair McLeod, will tell you 40,000 metric tons. Some other people are a little bit less than that. Certainly not the 20 some hundred tons that they tell us, but 8, 10, 12, 15, 20 times what they say that we have. If you look at the, the amount of production and the amount of importing and what they already had, it's pretty easy to say that they have way more than we do as a country, way more than the 8,100 metric tons we're supposed to have that hasn't been audited. But I have a feeling there will come a time before the music stops where they revalue gold and they will do the same thing that Roosevelt did. And they will revalue gold and they will end up having a very strong currency backed by gold, just like the finance minister from uh, the Dutch finance minister, financial minister said, we should do it too. We should revalue our gold. And isn't it ironic that if you look at the balance sheets of all the, the central banks, gold is held in an account called the gold revaluation account. That's the name of it on their balance sheet. So if they want to get their assets in line with their balance sheet liabilities, if they want to reliquify their economy one that is having problems with the, the real estate market and with the, the stock market in China. If they really do hold as much gold as my, our buddy Alistair says, who I have nothing but the utmost respect for, revalue gold and watch what happens. And look what they're slowly doing right now, turning up the heat on arbitrage. Silver's a buck and a half higher. Gold is 70, 80 bucks higher right now in, in Shanghai. Siphon slowly. Don't let them know what you're doing. You know, the, the, frog and boiling water, but just like inflation, when I was a kid in, in, in high school, price of a hamburger then to the price of a hamburger now, slowly turn it up and let the, the arbitrage, those sophisticated traders that can access the, the COMEX, the LBMA, and the Shanghai Exchange, sell all of our gold and silver in the West to uh, the Chinese and, and, and bang, they'll revalue it. And they'll revalue it to a level that will immediately change the narrative. And of course, with the BRICS meeting coming in, in October, don't be surprised to see, you know, this kind of talk start to heat up. Now, is it going to happen in October? I don't know. The mistake a lot of people make is saying it's going to happen in October. And that's what James Rickards did. And I was fortunate enough to have, you know, um, a couple drinks with him in July before the meeting happened in August. And, you know, what he said is going to happen. The, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the Eurasian Economic Union will join the BRICS. And they will issue a commodity-backed currency. But to say when is a mistake. But I do believe that these things indeed logically will happen. It's a logical progression. And when you see all of these BRICS countries, look at, you know, a country like Turkey, who has now just formally applied to BRICS, has massively accumulated silver recently, massively. Let me see if I can find the number here real quick. I think I can. I wrote it down, the number that they have accumulated, uh, imported in 2023 was uh, almost 1,200 tons of silver. And, you know, and in 2022, about 800 tons. And if you go back before that, nowhere near. So you have countries that are leaving the Western system. They were just told that we're, you're not going to join the European Union anytime soon. And so they formally applied to BRICS. Well, they're buying gold, they're buying silver, they're doing, you know, a year ago before they had to sell some of their gold to, to finance their, or to, to help get inflation under control, uh, they were buying more gold than anyone in the world too. So these nations, I think, see the big picture and the people in this country who are being lied to by the, by the, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, who are not letting us see what's really happening, are, are falling right into the hand of these countries that are de-dollarizing. So... The addition of new members, notably Iran, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt, to the BRICS framework since January 2024, has sparked concerns among Western governments, especially given the energy-centric nature of these additions. According to the International Monetary Fund, IMF, there is a projected significant reorientation of global economic power, with the BRICS countries forecasted to contribute 37.3% to the world's GDP by 2024 in contrast to the European Union's share of 14.5%. Andy sees that the inclusion of multiple countries applying to join the BRICS alliance, trade conducted in currencies other than the US dollar, and the substantial price disparities between metal markets in Shanghai and London are significant indicators of a changing global landscape. On February 4th, 2024, Russia, a BRICS member, confirmed its plan to establish a new payment system independent of the US dollar. 
It aims to facilitate cross-border transactions within BRICS and other developing nations using a different currency. Andy emphasizes the importance of looking at these events within a larger context, suggesting that they signal a shift in global dynamics that is becoming increasingly evident to more people. Despite declining reported inflation, prices continue to rise, especially in the precious metals market. Andy finds it perplexing that gold, traditionally seen as a hedge against inflation, is experiencing price drops when inflation rates are higher than expected. When you see 35 other countries formally apply to the BRICS and uh, 20 plus informally apply, when you see trade being done on the Embridge usurping the, the, the SWIFT system, when you see trade being done in other currencies that used to be done in dollars, when you see repricing of metal $100 an ounce higher and gold and $2 an ounce higher and silver on the on the Shanghai Exchange and in London. Or All of these things in and of themselves are important news stories. Put them together into a bigger context and they become very concerning. And, and that's really, I guess, what I have been trying to do. And so, yeah, it's it's I think that we're getting to that point where things are going to become very, very evident to people. Well, let's look at today as an example. Yeah. So, you know, uh, you, you have inflation come down, but let, it's still higher than expected, um, and the markets get smacked, right? It, and it's interesting. You look at the, a chart, and they come straight down. That's not how markets work. Um, in this case, it is in the price of metals. But look, we, it's a lie. We've had prices that have been rising at an annualized rate of 3% or more now for 34 straight months. And even as inflation has come down by the CPI, prices are still rising. I think it's important that when you look at gold and most people that don't understand what the heck gold is view it as an inflation hedge. That's what we've always been told. So I think it's kind of funny that as you know, the prices get smashed in the, in the derivative gold market when the CPI market comes back a little hotter than expected. It's supposed to be the other way around. So when you talk about manipulation when you talk about um the markets being controlled it, it's 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 very upsetting and i think to a lot of people this is what what dissuades so many people from accepting precious metals as a hedge because here you have numbers come in hotter than expected and bam they smack the heck out of it well that's if you've been around this market long enough you know, something to be expected, especially pushing gold down below a psychological level of 2000. But this this doesn't change anything. And nor does the fact that we keep seeing record withdrawals off of the exchanges and deliveries off the exchanges and central bank acquisitions. So, yeah, it's frustrating. 